Good afternoon, everyone. Um, not sure what kind of audience we're going to have today. Uh, you're listening, watching uh, Nathan Siegel, myself, and my colleague Hamish Baston out of Australia. Um, and we're here to talk about PTSD. And what you'll notice on the, the Facebook feed on, on my page here is um, the opportunity to make comments below the, the video. And also within BeLive, which is a platform that we're on, you can um, you can make your comments in Facebook, and they will appear within the the BeLive feed on uh, the back end of what we're looking at, and then we can address your questions. But essentially, we just want to give a, a bit of a, an introduction about what we're doing, and it, the, the whole thing came about as a result of me receiving sessions with Hamish. And initially, it was under the label of bullying. That was what I had come to Hamish for. And what happened was, is after a number of sessions, my problems, the major problem that I had actually, the last one uh, that was driving me nuts for years is what I called the inner war. And after the last session, it vanished, along with a whole bunch of other things. And it took a while for me to realize that something major had happened. And one day I was talking with Hamish and the topic of PTSD came up and he asked me something like, well, you don't have PTSD, do you? And I said, I, not anymore, or something along those lines. So it was rather a funny conversation because he, he said, well, we never talked about PTSD. And I said, well, that's because it never came up. I mean, well, the issue was it was all about bullying, which is what I was doing with, with Hamish. And but what happened was they said, um, we both kind of realized that, well, all this bullying stuff actually comes under this label, if you will, of, of um, PTSD. And PTSD is actually a very convenient way of organizing, if you will, all of these various different symptoms. And so I just thought, okay, I'll adopt it. And that's how this came about. But the, the way it came about, actually, was after I realized what had happened to me, I said, Hamish, we need to take this to the world. There are a lot of people in pain. A lot of people are suffering. We need to do what we can to help them. And that's how this all came about. So we're, what you're looking at is um, an experimental broadcast. We have a group of our own, uh, which we've been broadcasting to that group. And now what we're doing is we want to broaden our audience. And through BeLive, I was actually hoping to broadcast it into a different channel. I actually couldn't do that. What I discovered is that um, with BeLive, you can only broadcast to pages and groups that you can, can, can that are under your control. And so what, what I did is I just put out um, some links to different groups and thought, okay, let's give it a whirl. Let's see what happens. And so here we are. And I see we have one viewer. So don't know who that is. No idea. Okay. And if welcome. you feel, yeah, welcome. The other thing too about this broadcast, which is uh, experimental yet again, is um, it has the opportunity for us to bring a third person on. So, it, and that's if you're comfortable appearing on um, on video with us. You don't have to. If you've got a question, you can just toss it in the comments. We can answer it that way. But the, the, uh, after the last show, we thought, okay, well, we'll do this uh, three-screen kind of thing. I really don't know how it's going to work because we've n never done it before. But if you said, you know, we've got a question, like to ask, you know, we, we can bring you on and you would be on screen with us and we would address your questions. So, we'll so just, anyway. We'll just pop, pop it in and we'll answer it. It's, yeah, it's either like or. I mean... Many people are concerned about uh, about their privacy. I get it. You know, it's very important. And certainly within our group, it's a, it's a private group. But again, we are wanting to expand our audience. We want to reach more people. We want to do what we can. And so, mm -hmm. okay, we have one viewer. Not sure who it is. If you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. just uh, say hello. You know, it would be I'd nice. Say, to I'd, say it's, uh, I'd say it's Jen who put the message in there. I suspect so, Probably. yeah. I suspect yeah. so, but I don't know. So we're just we're just here, and um, you know, there is a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, Hamish has been setting up uh, different programs for people, and I, I think it would be really good for Hamish to talk about that. 
Um, well, it, the, um, I mean, like you said, you, it's sort of where we've ended up with the, the focus on PTSD um, from from our journey together when you came to me with the, the bullying. Um, yeah. And we'll talk about that so quickly. Um, it's it's um, how long you had it for and how quickly it's um, it's moved. You've moved on from it, and everything sort of collapsed from it. Now, um, I suppose to give a bit of a an understanding of um, what we do with PTSD, where we're we're really not mainstream. Um, we um, we take a, an approach with neuro linguistic programming, the NLP. Um, so. Yeah, a lot of uh, look. I, I don't even really use the the label. I, I won't label anything that some you know if someone's got something going on. Um, you know that a lot of people have been given mainstream labels like the PTSD, and we will use that. I mean, people can then recognise, and we can you know, connect with what is going on at a certain level because people have that understanding of what it is. But to me, is it's pretty much like, well, what's going on with your life right now? What What's what's happening? What is it that you're not wanting and where do you want to be? How do we get you there? So whether it's PTSD or it's depression or it's whatever it is, there's just stuff going on. I mean, it's, it's all it's all just something that we've created in our thinking. And if we've created that, we can equally uncreate it. So, you know, it's, it's just tapping into that, the unconscious thinking, the programs that we've got going on that we've, you know, I mean, PTSD essentially is something has occurred in your life. It might have been a childhood. It might have been six months ago. It might have been from, from I mean, the, the people we've been working with and, you know, certainly the people on our group, Nathan, the, the events, the traumas are, are wide and varied and, some stuff you just don't it's amazing what people go through in their lives um, but certainly from these events you know, we create an emotional attachment to it and we've, um, you know a, a good events or bad events whatever we have through our life we're going to a, a create a, a certain emotional attachment from it now if we have a good event um, and we create some attachment to it you know through life we're going to have similar things happen and we get these triggers we get these anchors that are happy and i like to do this or whatever it is but equally if we have bad experiences um and traumatic events we create emotional attachments to that so when things happen later on or through life or whatever we get these triggers we get these things that shut us down we get the fear we get the panic and and the fear and the panic and everything is actually just our unconscious mind trying to protect us it's if I become afraid of it, I won't go into that situation. Hurt me. So we create this this world of the fear and the panic that just shuts us down. So we become become safe from it. But it 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 then becomes what drives us and becomes our reality, um, one that we've created that isn't isn't a nice one to be in. So with the neuro linguistic programming, we tap into the events that have happened and disconnect the emotion to it. And you can talk about it shortly, Nathan, how quickly it is, but it is, it's a very fast process. It's, um, you know, if we've created a program of thinking from a certain event with that emotion and because this happens or something similar happens, we do this, we need to sever that, that program of thinking and create something different. Um, and you're going through this quite strongly at the moment, Nathan, with you had very specific programs to certain events, but now I asked you when we were doing this broadcast, what is PTSD? When you look at your PTSD, what what is it? <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, you asked me that the other day, and I, and I really wasn't able to answer it very well because um, I, even now I can't. I just <laughs> it's. Just, I mean, I, I really can't. It's a very strange um, thing in a way to be asked because, well, the, the major events of it uh, are, are gone. There's, there's the odd lingering thing. But the interesting thing about it is like when we went through the last major piece, which was uh, 
for anyone listening here, we seem to have just one person, but maybe more later. But there were three major things that we were going through, which is timeline, belief change, and anchoring. The last thing that Hamish did with me was the anchoring. And the anchoring is what wiped out the the the, the bulk of the PTSD. It was like th there were these various stages that I needed to go through with Hamish. And when that vanished, so did my story, so did my history. Um, I became, uh, it, it's a rather kind of, even now I have trouble with it in a way, but I became my definition of what a normal person would be like. Do I feel any better or worse than anybody else? Of course, I can't possibly know that. But my idea of what a normal person would be, that's what happened. And all the, the drama and everything to do with the PTSD, the nightmares, flashbacks, uh, hypervigilance, all of that, it just, it just vanished. And actually, I just was struck a while ago, no pun intended, but struck by an experience I had with a woman who does have PTSD, hypervigilance in a very big way. And we were having coffee. And in this coffee shop, they started up one of the blenders for making frappuccinos. Huge loud noise. And when it went off, she nearly jumped through the ceiling. I mean, her reaction was very, very visible in terms of the hypervigilance. And at the same time, I noticed my reaction, which was, I didn't even budge. Bye-bye to the hypervigilance. So there were all these things that just suddenly vanished. And the thing about it is I didn't realize what had happened for quite a while, for about 10 days. And then we started talking about it, and that's when the whole PTSD thing came up. Uh, I was calling it re uh, trauma to do with bullying, which it is, mm. is, was. And then all of a sudden it just went poof. <coughs> and I mean, as I've said in other broadcasts, I thought I was going to die from this, but now it's over. And the way this came about is me going to Hamish and saying, we've got to help people. You know, this is huge. I mean, to put it in perspective, I had been dealing with this for the better part of uh, 40, actually longer than 40 years because it started when I was a kid. And um, and to now be on the other side of this is really, it's kind of bizarre. It's like what I've said in other broadcasts because um, okay, I was talking to this one guy in a PTSD, uh, military PTSD group, and he said, I thought I was pretty much over it. And I watched some reenactments and I screamed the house down. And he said, oh, Nathan here is probably just the same as me. And I said, that's where we part company because I've watched the reenactments and I felt all the emotions. And I also knew I was going to sleep like a baby that night. And I did. I didn't have any problems at all. That's the difference. So one of the things that Hamish has said is that when you go through this, the event doesn't necessarily change. And it did it in my can. mind, and it can, but it doesn't necessarily change, although it did for me. But the, the trauma, the emotional link, all of that goes away. And when it goes away, all of your problems suddenly vanish. Mm. Yep. And it's that simple. Yes, absolutely. It's, you know, like you said, you've been living with it for 40 years or more. And yeah. you've been through so many years and decades of other other sort of mainstream help that was it was just on and on and on. It was the same stuff all the time. Yeah, um, I mean, spiritual did help to a degree. I mean, there were certain things that happened, but it, it, it the like the some of the major things in recent years, the stuff to do with Eckhart Tolle and learning how to stop thinking, which was useful still is, except for one thing. It didn't get rid of the underlying um, unconscious patterns to do with the PTSD. I still had it. It didn't touch that at all. And so while it was useful, it still didn't free me of what I really wanted. It wasn't until we went through these sessions together that one day, like I said, this is about five months ago maybe now, hard to remember exactly. I lost track of the day that it actually stopped. I, I just remember doing the exercise on anchoring, which was, and what was interesting about that is Hamish, we started talking about this thing because I was talking about the inner war and I was talking about anchoring and I knew part of it and Hamish said, yeah, but you're missing a piece. And he told me what I was missing. And then I went in search of it and couldn't find it. And then I came home and I was sitting here going, wait a second, I've got 
that missing. Uh, like the item that I needed, which was an old radio. And I have an old radio in my car that I never used. Somebody ripped the aerial off like seven years ago. I never replaced it. Um, and so I was able to do the exercise, but I did it without Hamish even being present. I did it by myself in my car. It took me two minutes. And as soon as I punched the power button on the radio and turned my ignition off, everything in my mind stopped. And the inner and the voice voices. stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the voices, the argument, the fight, the drama. It just stopped. And minutes turned into hours, and I kept waiting for it to come back. And eventually it did kind of creep back a little bit. But it, when it did come back, it was rather odd. It was like the way that I describe it, it was sort of like being in a nice big room and on with the periphery of my vision, it was like a little mouse was trying to sneak into the room. And as soon as I saw it, it's like, uh-uh. And it's like I metaphorically grab a broom, just go, whoosh, just sweep it out. But what was happening is in, in my mind is I was saying to th those voices that were trying to come back, I was saying, no, you can't come back. You've been banished. I turned the volume off and then it would just instantly stop. And then I would feel this thing like a very quickly sliding down a chute or a funnel. And I would find myself in the present moment where I'd always been in the first place. But it was very, very pronounced in that way. I would just suddenly, oh, right, I'm here. And the problem would vanish for a few hours, a couple of days. Sometimes I wouldn't notice it for a week. It started getting really, well, it started getting really long periods, and then uh, a primary uh, abuser for my life showed up and had to go through that shock and processing and so on. But again, getting over it really, really fast because of the tools I had and mm. the initial tool of the anchoring. And I noticed that some, some, like the argument would start again. I'm going, well, geez, you know, wonder what's going to happen if I go out to my car and do this exercise again. I was praying, uh, I was wondering, is it going to bring everything back? No, that didn't happen. So I went out driving, and it's, it's kind of funny, actually, the way I did this, because I shouldn't have done it this way, but I did it, and it worked regardless, which was I was out in my car, and I was saying, oh, yeah, shit, I forgot about this. Let's see if I can make it work again. So I punched the power button and turned the volume up. Um, so I was listening to static on my radio so I could do this exercise. And I did it at precisely the wrong time or the right time, depending on your point of view, because I was driving when I did it. Should have been stopped at the light or pulled off by the side of the road, but I did it while I was driving. And and did everything that I had done the first time, punched the power button, and instantly stopped. I felt this sliding down the chute or funnel again, instantly back in the present moment. And I'm looking around going, wow, that was cool. And mm. and so there were a number of times when it would show up again, the inner argument a little bit, and then I do the exercise every time, it would just vanish. Mm. Really yeah. cool. And really this is cool. the, you know, doing the initial work over over a few sessions to to disassociate and and remove uh, detach the the emotions from the events, and you know, as as you know, taking you forward into your future without looking at your life without what it is. And, and that emotion attached to it, you look at it very differently. But you know, it's that's the first step is doing all that stuff. But then, then giving you the tools to to be able to the the, the anchoring, the state changes, all this sort of stuff. That you know, when things do start to resurface or there's little things going on, bang, it, it just goes instantly. Because what you're going to do then, it, that's just puts you know, over. A, um, you know, equally from from what's happened with events in the past, you, you've you've created these programs and these habits that should something happen, you went into the panic and the fear and the shutdown and the anger and everything that was associated with the the PTSD. But with that program now severed, and it's funny, you, you even did it again when I asked you what the PTSD was. Was that look on your face of like I, I've got no idea of even how to think about it? But now yeah. you've got this new program. It takes time to build those habits, but you've got the resources to do it. You haven't got the, you know that you can't think down the other path, but as things start to creep up a little bit, because, you know, the events, like you said, the events cannot change. The physical events in your life cannot change. It's just how we see them. And 
and you know the world that we want to create around it you're creating a different world but now each time a little thing comes up and you use that resource that tool that anchoring whatever one you want to use you're going to get to a point where you're not consciously doing that anymore you don't need to sit there with the radio and turn it up and see what's going on it, it just won't happen that habit That's will true. be so strong your that, thermostat will be reset in how you do things it, uh, it is true it does because... take, you know we, we do say that it's very fast to remove the ptsd like you know everything that we're seeing is sort of four or five sessions and the the crux of it the the big part of it the the core of it is gone but yes there's still a journey that you need to go through that the habit needs to change but that's we give you those resources yeah and in my case like when this thing showed up the tools were spontaneously there i didn't actually do anything to make them happen i just knew what to do it was it was rather surprising there was another time like within a week of this ending initially where i wound up with a traumatic event in downtown where i'm living and the vendor yelling at me and all this stuff and and i just got out of there but then uh, like a block later i sat down uh, and and noticed that the inner war started up again a little bit with this this vendor but i just ran it through in my mind as if the radio as if i had the radio and everything in front of me and i just ran through it in my mind as if i turned it on listened to the stuff all of that and it and when i went through it it instantly stopped and it never came back not once it just instantly stopped i thought wow this is great this is a wonderful tool and mm. see the, the thing is what the hamish is talking about and and what you would learn as a person working with um well in this case, Hamish, I don't have the skill set yet. But this stuff, when you learn it, it's yours. It becomes yours. You can use it whenever you want. And not just for something like this. You can use it in other ways. Like I, I created an anchor that I use for um, state change very quickly into, into deep meditation. And, um, and what I did in creating the anchor is I got to the state where I wanted and I created the anchor, but I, uh, and I'm not going to demonstrate what exactly what I did, but it was a, a rather unusual hand position that I would not do under any other circumstances. And every time I do it, like today actually, um, but I do it and I instantly straighten up, I take a very deep breath and my state changes in seconds. So it's a very, very useful tool. And when you mm -hmm. learn how to use it for not just the PTSD, but you see how you can use it in other situations, it becomes extremely effective. Like, um, like I created a video. Uh, one of the problems with many people coming from ab abusive backgrounds have is poor boundaries. So one of the things I talk about is, okay, here's how you build the boundaries. But it's not enough to have a good boundary because you're going to be accosted by abusive people who will really want to overrun that so what i did is i created a confidence building exercise and i created this uh let me see if i can demonstrate it this hand position here you notice my my two fingers up and the two fingers curled and the thumb over over the top and that again is not necessarily a, a position that you would use all the time but the idea behind it is to create a series of anchors walking a person through uh, particular moments or times in their life where they felt confident, grounded, all this sort of stuff, and then doing this and doing it repeatedly. So when you wind up in a situation where you're dealing with somebody who's abusive, who's trying to push into your space and you don't want them there, you do this and it will reactivate that confidence in your neurology and will give you more strength and poise and, and whatever it is. Uh, resilience, I think, would be a good word. Resourcefulness. So that when you're dealing with this kind of person, they won't be able to overrun you as easily as they could in the past. That's yeah. another really great way that you could use an anchor. Very powerful. Yep. Yep. I just, I just got a message from one of our people in our group saying oh. she can't, are we doing the broadcast you put yeah, a link on that group i did i did put a link there um, um do i send that link that you sent me 
No, you wouldn't. Um, hold on a second. Um, I know I put the link up, um, mm. but hold on. Let me just uh, grab the link of our our broadcast, and let me just. Uh, let's, so, yeah, someone's asking if we're doing this. Uh, hold on a second. We're actually almost done. Uh, Some. And, you know, the process of um, a lot of people ask, and, um, you know, what's the process that we go through with um, with doing the PTSD, with doing the, the initial stages, because what's the change going to be? Am I going to be re reliving all the, all the stuff from the past and diving into that? It's, um, you know, we're not, we're not about sort of going back into and reliving the events and trying to face the fears and get rid of them that way. Um, we do need to unconsciously go back to an event to find out what it is so we can get um, get, a, get some learning from it. And, you know, everything that we do, everything that happens, there's a, there's a positive lesson from it, um, finding out what that is and then detaching that emotion to it. And we come out of it very quickly. Like a, a timeline where we do that is 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, yep going in there very quickly, having a look at what the event was and um, you know, removing that attachment from it and the emotion and moving forward. So you never need to go back there again. When you do look at it, if you have anything that sort of makes you look at that event again, it really doesn't mean anything. You've got a lesson from it. It's, it's, it's gone. I mean, you, you see the events of what happened to you in your past, just events. It's it's just funny, you know, that until you mentioned it in this moment, I just suddenly realized I rarely even think about it at all. Um, mm -hmm. There were there were two timelines that we did, <laughs> and the, the first timeline, I, I mean, I still see it now in the way that it became after we did this work, but it changed into a rather benign scene, all in color and everything else, and, it, and I still see it that way. But it's completely benign. Yeah. There's no problem with it at all. And the second scene, the second major one, which really caused the big release to happen, um, is turned into basically a field of gray. There's some gray shapes in it, but there's really no color and forms are very indistinct. That was the major one. And no big deal. No problem. None. Yep. And like I said, I rarely think of it because there's really nothing there to look at. Well, at least not much. I see a dark yeah. shape and a little bit of light, uh, grayness, all gray. Uh, um, and that's it. And that's the end of it. Mm. That's the wonderful thing about this stuff. When it dissolves, it really dissolves. Yep. And it dissolves fast. And yes, very much so. I mean, I was so I astonished know. when it happened. I didn't realize that it could change that fast. Mm. Yep. Um, Some, yeah, I've got other people asking for this link now. Oh, that's interesting. Good. Well, I um, guess we're meant to stay here for a little while. I posted it in our group, the link to it, um, right? Yeah, I don't know who else is asking for it. So I'll see. Kelly asking for it at the moment. Oh, Kelly. Okay, sure. Um, and so, actually, yeah. It, yeah. Um, and and it, as you know, you know, one, once we once we go through one event and collapse that stuff, there there can often be another one that's uh, not for the same, not for the same triggers, not for the same emotions, whatever it is. But there's you know, okay, well we've we've um, we've collapsed this stuff, but there's some other stuff happening there as well, and this is the legs on the table. What you know what. The supports of the PTSD. We've got to knock out this one, knock out that one, knock yeah, knock out that one. So as we go along, you know, something suddenly hidden. One of them, another one comes up and goes, "Whoa, now this is this is bothering me. This is this is where I'm at now. These are my challenges at the moment. So let's do another timeline on that and get rid of that." Now, um, you know, it's. Every session that we do, it's like, okay, well, where are you now? What's what are your challenges right now? What what's what's the biggest problem in your life right now? Let's bang get into that and knock them out one by one, and it's it just goes. Yeah, 
That's pretty but, interesting but then, for sure. Then you just have those resources, those tools to keep you going, to, to yeah. change those habits, to build the new patterns, the new programs, and you, your neurologies, it, it just, it's, it's different. Very much so. Very much so. I mean, the, the way this whole thing came about, it was very, very fast. Um, and just uh, like the last, the last one on the anchoring, but it was the one that was seemed to be the most powerful. And yet I also know it was, it was cumulative what was happening yep. piece by piece, yep. releasing this, releasing that. And then that last piece was like, um, I, I refer to it as the linchpin moment. People ask me, well, you know, what happened? And I, I call it the linchpin moment. Linchpin moment, you could think of it as if you're familiar with what a split pin or a cotter pin is to do with mechanics. Split pin or a cotter pin is something that you use um, to hold things together. So, for example, you have a, a bolt that comes up and the bolt has a hole in it. And then you put it together a number of pieces in a stack, whatever they are, and then you secure it with the, the nut at the top. But there's always a possibility that the nut can come loose, but, and the nut has slots cut into it. And what you do is you use a pin, a split pin or a cotter pin, as it's sometimes called, or a linch pin, and you slide that pin in, and it locks the bolt in place, and then it's got, because it's split, you bend it with a uh, pair of pliers, and that fixes everything in position so it can't come apart at all that's the thing that holds it all together but if you pull that split pin out like one day um this is from a long time ago and i used to fly airplanes i did a pre-flight when i was looking at the linkage to do with the elevator and and the trim and i missed it on the first pre-flight but not on the second pre-flight and i saw that the mechanic had not put the bloody split pin in the place and if i hadn't caught that the nut could have spun off, created flutter in the controls. I would have had a control failure and I would have crashed. And when I saw it, I grabbed the mechanic and I gave him hell. I said, you didn't put the damn split pin in. And he just went, oops, and fixed it. <laughs> but, that's, but that's an example of, what, of the split pin, the cotter pin, the linch pin, however you want to call it. When that thing it goes, then everything is free to fall apart. And, this, and, and it will sooner or later. I was just lucky I caught it. But when you pull the linchpin in terms of this psychological stuff, the whole structure collapses. It just goes bang. And that's how it works. That's the best way I can describe it. And when we did the second session, it was really kind of funny because um, my late father was a jeweler and a watchmaker. And when it let go in my mind, it appeared as two watch mainsprings wound in different directions, one for the past, one for the future, and they both unwound at the same time, going in different directions. It took about a second or two, and it was over. And all of a sudden, I became a different person. It was that fast. So, And your experience, of course, is going to be different. That's to be expected. Um, and, you know... And this is, this is one thing that you found, Nathan, because when you went through the timeline and you got your lesson from it and, yeah. um, and your lesson was walk away. Yep, still is. And, <laughs> and, it was, and it still is. And then when you came to talk to other people about it and they were asking, you know, the, the bullying, and it was specifically around those issues, but you were, yeah. you were saying to them, you just got to walk away, but you were getting attacked. <laughs> you can't just walk away because... You know, people were having a real go at you because of what you were saying. You can't just do that. But that was your lesson. And this is something you've really got to, you, you have really got to, had, you've got an understanding. When we take people through that timeline process to get that lesson, that learning of whatever it is, for mm -hmm. you it was to walk away. For someone else it might be to stand there and face it and just be strong or sure. whatever it is. But walking sure. away isn't going to work for them. So, you know, everyone's going to have, there, you know, your lynch, even your linchpin example. Yeah, you know, I, I know. It's, I just, I, I, yeah, I know. I know it's particular to me. I'm, I'm very much aware yeah. of that. And that's, but that's and fine. I, it's your lesson. Here, here is you sharing how it's all sort of happened for you and it's all collapsed. It is that yeah. linchpin bang. It's all gone. The nuts have fallen off and it's fallen apart. 
Yeah, it it doesn't really matter what the examples are. What what right. I'm, I'm doing talking about this is it's it's a bridge into the process. It, this was my journey. Whoever else comes to this, your journey will be different, for sure. Mm. There's no and, possible and way it can be the same. No, no, and, and and that's the that's what we with the with the NLP. It's like we're guiding you with questions. So you come up with your own answers. If if we tell you as, you know, to go through sessions and, and the therapy, if we tell you what to do, it's not going to work because it's not you. It's not you coming up with your own answers. This is true. It it, it has to be. It has to be your process. It, it will be. It's a guarantee. There's there's no question that that it will happen designed for you i mean even if you like even if you had two people living side by side in the same house while growing up with the same environment i mean the case example is where i come from and the a very similar environment many things were similar and yet i look at myself and i look at my siblings were vastly different people not mm. even close to being similar outside of the fact that we grew up in the same household but the way that we've yep. interpreted, the way that we responded, the things we learned, the things we do, our personalities. And that's another thing, too. Um, everybody's personality is different. You could have two people in exactly the same situation, and I guarantee you they're exposed to trauma or whatever it is. They will have a completely different interpretation. And some well, might say, well, my interpretation is right and yours is wrong. It's not true. When, when you look at how we... Our, when we, if we, if we're both standing in the same room, looking in the same direction, and we're both processing those two bi two million bits of information a second, whatever it is, and we're filtering it through to come up with one one answer, one one perspective of what it is, we're both going to be totally different, even yeah. exactly the same thing. Our interpretation, our our world is so different. The way we look at things is so different. It's. Um, yeah, we we can't have the same answers. It's um, and equally too, you know, um, for you to understand that you've got to change your thinking and and come up with these answers, you can't you can't do it yourself because we with the NLP we have the conversation with your unconscious thinking. It's not we don't want to talk to your, your conscious mind and get these. You know, I'm going to think about an answer and give it to you. We want the stuff that's really deep, the stuff that's that is you that. You know, the beliefs, the values, everything that you, you have created through your life, your unconscious thinking, we want those answers. And that's yeah. what we talk to, bring that out very quickly. Um, and it's just all questioning. You come up with, bang, this is what, and, and you've done it many times. When I've asked you questions, it's like, whoa, where did that answer come from? But yeah. it's exactly what we need. You consciously, you look at it and go, that can't be true. What's, I don't understand, but that's exactly what we want. Well, a, a big piece of this too is the the communication, and something which we've spoken about many times, which is conversational hypnosis. And when you have someone who's in mm. a receptive state, um, it's very easy to get the answers. And I, I just remember years ago there was one thing I was working with a woman who's an NLP practitioner, and we would do trance stuff for fun, which is kind of a bizarre thing to do, but we would do it for fun. And there was yeah. one time when she asked me some questions about a, a thing in my past, and I'm not going to get into it here, but she just asked me these questions, and I had instant answers to every single thing that she tossed my way. And yeah. one of the reasons why is because being in that receptive state of trance and complete trust, and it just it was so surprising how fast it happened. Mm -hmm. Same with Hamish here, and same for any of those uh, of you who go into this, when you're guided into that hypnotic journey, then your unconscious mind will give the answers that that need to be given. You don't need to worry about it, think about it, wonder about it. It's going to be there. It's just going to be there. Yeah. And yeah. another thing that many people in our group have uh, said, you know, uh, you know I, I would like this, but I'm terrified of who I'm going to become. And yeah. my answer is you're going to become who you've always been underneath this noise, underneath this story. When the story goes, you just become who you've always been. And you don't need to worry about it because it's who you naturally are. And yeah. that and that tends to freak a lot of people out. They're going, oh, no, 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 no. No, it's not a problem. It, when it happened for me, it took a little while to adjust, but 
I wasn't worried about it. No, your identity doesn't suddenly vanish down the toilet. What vanishes is the conditioning and the story and the trauma that goes. Yeah. But you yeah. can't lose who you are as a human being. It's who you naturally are. And just um, noticing here that we've got a few viewers and it would be really nice if any of you have any questions or comments, uh, ideas that you would like to share with us. It'd be really nice to see that so we could address those. Is, um, mm. That's what this is all about, actually. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of the broadcast, this broadcast is unusual in the sense that if one of you said, hey, I want to join you on the broadcast, we've got an open seat for that. It would change the way we appear. But if you felt comfortable with that and you wanted to join us, um, I could send you the link or I think I can. I'm not really sure how this works. But anyway, um, but you could uh, you could join us on the broadcast and ask your question and we'll, we'll answer it. Or if that is uh, intimidating or uncomfortable, feel free to toss a, a question in. We'll answer it. Just type it in. Yeah, yep. just type it in. Sorry, that's what I meant. Sometimes my language is not as precise as it could be. <laughs> so, we'll get the idea. Uh, I, I do. Th I'm. I, I'm pretty sure it's working today. Anyway, there's some. I mean, there's 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 people watching. There's I'm watching it on the live feed as well, and it's working on on the Facebook feed. So it yeah. seems to be working okay. Um, we do normally yeah, ask at the beginning for people. To Something My camera still hear. looks like crap, and I have no idea why, but anyway, Facebook Live, be live, whatever it is. Yeah, yep. I just, it, we've um, just got the one comment, that's it today. I guess that's as far as we're going to go, and maximum Ooh. of three people watching it right now. And, and Yeah. I mean, any, Jen, Jen, putting, Jen putting that comment in, it's, um, yeah. you know, as a... You know, as a veteran and someone who struggles with PTSD, um, you know, some of the stuff that we've been talking about and that sort of different um, perspective on that different view on how to how to work with PTSD. Have you? I, I'm interested to know if you've heard of the um, heard of NLP before and the the, the approach and the, the way we the way we help people with PTSD, or is this something that you've just Sort of come into and, and hearing for the first time. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts around it? It'd be really nice to know. Yeah, the other thing too that's really important to stress here is that when your NLP, or sorry, when your PTSD goes, you won't be suffering anymore. You won't be struggling with it because there won't be anything to struggle with. It will be gone. You just won't have yeah. it anymore. And it's, yep. the way that I've described it sometimes is like a reset button being pressed in your life and you go back in time. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. And Kelly's so Kelly call. put a message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it won't show on my phone. I guess that's a limitation to do with BeLive. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I, mm. I wish I could tell you. I don't know. Be, and then we had Kelly and Sally both. Both not being able to find it on the on our group. Um, yeah, that, which is that, weird like you said, I, I posted it. So, yeah, like you said at the beginning, that this um, you know this is a totally new life for a little while on the group. Mm -hmm. Um, but now you've it's on another page, and you're putting the links to other places. Um, yeah, and I don't really know where everybody's coming from today. I haven't a clue because the um, yeah, Susie's saying she couldn't find the link. The The link was on the group. Um, I only put it up mm. a couple of days ago, along with the window yeah. from BeLive saying, hey, we're doing a broadcast. So I don't understand why it, it's not easy to see, I guess. Um, well, actually, like I'm, sit I'm sitting on your page, Life, to Life After PTSD, watching the, the comments and the broadcast as it's coming through. But I, I got that link from, from the group yeah. at the very beginning. Well, cool. That's... Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. We're it, it's something that we're just going to have to get used to over time. This is our yeah. first broadcast. We really didn't know how any of this would go at all. <laughs> and um, that's okay. I mean, As I, we do I, it, we, we know what to give people in the right places. And yep. 
You yeah, I mean, we we might uh, next time around. I might try it in a different way. I might use a YouTube live uh, broadcast, which allows um, up to ten people to join us in what they call the film strip, which is underneath the yeah. the main broadcast, and it just switches back between each person. Uh, I don't really know which one which way is the best way to go. I don't think there's a best way, but the nice thing about the YouTube ones is that they would wind up on the appropriate channel after the broadcast. And uh, you can also yep. copy the link that's created in YouTube Live to a whole bunch of different channels, and it will appear live in those channels. I can't do that with this. I tried. So yep. maybe next time yep. around, I'll try a YouTube Live one, and wherever I copy that link, that's where it goes live. Uh, and that, I think, might be a better option for us. We're, we're experimenting. I watched, the, I, watched, I watched a webinar training on Zoom last night, which seemed like quite a good live platform. It is. Um, uh, Zoom is definitely a nice platform, but I don't know if I could use it in the same way. I, I just don't know. I haven't a clue. Uh, we'll the, figure it out. If, or not. It, it's, it's, just a, it's just a bunch of experimenting. Uh, I mean, initially when I got into this whole live streaming thing, it was through uh, Google Hangouts on Air. That eventually became YouTube Live, but it's still using Hangouts Engine as far as I can tell. And it creates a YouTube page immediately. So maybe for the next broadcast, I'll try it and just see what happens and see if it makes mm. it easier for people to find what we're doing. Maybe it yep. will, maybe it won't. But the nice thing about it is that I can uh, copy and paste the broadcast to a whole bunch of different places, and you'll see a page where it says "coming soon," and it's really cool that way. I rather like it, and then and give it a whirl and see which one works yeah. best for us over time. And it may be it may be the Hangouts on Air thing, because it's also yep. a lot easier to add people to the broadcast as well. There. There aren't restrictions in the way it works. or Well, there are restrictions. There's always something, but only one way to yeah. find out. I'll do it for the next broadcast, and then we'll see, see how well it works and see yeah. how those of you here uh, respond to it. Um, um, yeah, only one way to find out. Because part of it, too, yeah, is... Yeah, because you... Go ahead. It's like, because... Um, like I said, we're taking this, we normally do this in our group, but it's you're now outside of that and, try, and reaching out onto different um, platforms, different pages and different groups. Yeah. Um, I was just going to grab, um, for anyone that does sort of, I, and I know that people can watch it later on other groups, um, I'm just going to grab the, um, you know, if people do watch this later on, and have any questions or um, so I've just lost the link to it now, sorry. Um, if anyone oh, does have any questions uh, after the um, after one, I've, I've just popped the, the link to our group onto this onto the comments. Yeah, that's a useful so, thing to do. If and anyone the other does yeah. The other thing too is, I, um, since we now have uh, different programs in place, uh, we're, and we're still getting used to this, is the different courses that we're offering. Mm. Um, probably. Oh, certainly, yeah. It's. Um, I'm just looking at one of the pages here. Uh, let me just see. Which one should I put up? Uh, yeah, I guess the "How to Break Free from PTSD." We'll copy that link. Um, yeah. Now, what, what Nathan's putting up now is a link to, um, that I did a little while ago on really explaining um, our, um, our view of what PTSD is, um, how, it's, how, how it is created in our thinking, um, and equally how then to, um, how the NLP tools will help to collapse that and give a really better understanding of what's going on with it. Um, there are tools in there, um, like Nathan was talking about before, the anchoring and all that sort of stuff. Um, um, it goes through into um, being able to get those tools that you can start to work on it yourself. There's some, um, look, it's just a lot of good information. It's a good starting point. It's, um, there it is, you've just put it up now. Um, yep. What is um, the journey with it? 
that. It's um, there's a couple of audio um, Kelly has done as well that people are getting a huge result from. Um, the first one being heal your past is um, a lot of people are finding that's just helping people deal with those issues unconsciously that are breaking down some of the programs and the emotions that um, that have been attached to those events. Uh, and then moving into the one with um, improve your sleep where <laughs> everyone using it is <laughs> they're getting great sleep. I think you, you've used it a little bit as well, Nathan, but there's, I know I, Susie I know, here, yeah. Susie, who's on here at the moment, she was, um, when she first started using it, her, her comments were that for 13 years she'd only ever slept for uh, three, four hours a night and waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to get, get to sleep and it just went on for years and years and years and she used this Improve Your Sleep hypnotic audio and she's getting eight, nine, ten hours sleeps and feeling fantastic every day, she's, yeah. every night. I mean, there's going to be some times where, you know, we've had a bad day, things have been, something's happened and, you know, we just might. Look, those are, I, I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes too. It's just our thinking is just, you know, what's happened or a noise has woken us up. But I wake up in the middle of the night too. I get back to sleep okay. Yeah. Um, but it's it's okay to do that. And it's, if it does happen sometimes, that's okay. But uh, people like Susie and others using it are getting really good sleep at the moment. And that's a really important thing for, you know, living with the PTSD and the depression. And if you're not getting good sleep, if you're getting woken up and all that is out of whack, it just it just spirals everything, it compounds everything. And, you know, yeah. if you can start have that starting point of getting good sleep and rejuvenating yourself and waking up fresh to refresh every um you know, Kelly's given a written a, a thirty six page ebook as well with that to, um, you know, really change your sleep environment and give it an overhaul. So there's a lot of great information in there, but it's a, it's a stepping stone, it's a starting point. You know, where do you go from there? Well, there's the there's the program online programs that we're doing that can, um, you know, really help people to collapse everything as well on their own. If 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 you need more help and something a bit bigger, well, we we go into a coaching program and like as you know, and there's a lot of people we've been working with who, you know, it is five sessions or less and it's gone. It's pretty but amazing. Then, I mean, but like the, then it's having the, those tools to just keep moving forward yeah. with. And this uh, link that I put up is one of a couple of different funnels that Hamish created to do with the PTSD, healing your life, better sleep and so on. And all of these are designed to give people the tools that they need to re remove the PTSD problem on their own. So there are a number of reasons why we wound up doing this. And one of the reasons is to do with the coaching. The, the fees involved with it were uh, high for some people. But the other reason that this came about is we realized we don't have enough manpower to pull this off. We can't be everywhere for everybody. So we needed to create courses to make it easier for people to get a lot of the knowledge that they needed and hopefully to be able to remove their symptoms just by going through the videos and following the, the various exercises. And then as an option, if they discover, well, you know, I'm still having trouble here or here, mm -hmm. then they can reach out to us and say, okay, I'd like a, a session to do with this or that, or maybe a few things. Hard to say, mm -hmm. but it, it allows us to be, um, how do I put it? Not everywhere at once, obviously, but it but allows us to give people more resources than we would be able to otherwise. And so for those of you who are watching this who are looking for help, and it's also less expensive for you as well. It gives you access to all these really powerful resources. Like when I was looking at the things um, for the course itself, one of the ones, uh, patterns, I believe it was the swish pattern or something like that. In there and I thought yeah this is a really good one and then some of the other things in there which I'm familiar with because of our sessions and sessions that I did yep. with other practitioners in years past I'm just going man this this is great this is really good stuff and it's yep. not and necessarily that difficult to do you just follow the instructions you do it you practice with it and I guarantee yep. you things are going to change quite likely but very if, quickly if, 
Yeah, if you need that extra help with it, though, let's have a conversation. Let's get on Skype and just see where you're at and what, you know, where do you want to be? How do we get you there? What's what is going on yeah. for you? It's like, oh, you know, you might say you've got PTSD, but oh, you know, what is that challenge? What is it to you? What is it the the biggest thing that's making you think the way you're thinking? Um, you know, like I said at the beginning, the labels to me aren't really that important. It's just something yeah. that helps everyone sort of connect with. You know that, that that way of thinking, um, but it's what is the, what is the biggest challenge? Let's have a chat about it. Where do you want to be, and how do we get you there? Um, and yeah. we'll let you know exactly what, what will happen. Um, it's um, you know what is the cost of living with it? Yes, it's a very yeah. important question because uh, some people object and say, "Oh, well, you know, it's X amount of money." Well, okay, fine, that's true, but. What is the price of your freedom? What is the price of living with this, say, for the next oh. 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Exactly. Which it's is not worse. financial. Yeah, what's it no. costing you emotionally? What's it costing you in your relationships? What's it costing you in, yeah, in just living? It's, um, you know, yeah. are, you, are you not working because you've, you're in this position? You're thinking this way. Um, you know, you can, it, it, you can be out of this space and create a new reality. Um, yeah, I mean, this place that you're in is a reality that you've created from your, your thinking and your beliefs and everything and things that have happened that has locked you in here. Let's unlock it and let you look at what you can be and what do you want to be and how do we help you, you know, how do you help you create that? And another really important thing here is we're not like traditional counselors or uh, psychologists, uh, psychiatrists, we're not here with the idea that you're going to work with us for years. This, this, no. we're in a way where it's kind of, it sound, might sound a bit weird, but like a revolving door in a, in a sense that you would show up and we would help you get to where you want to be, which we'll say from the standpoint of coaching, four to six sessions, you'll be done and you won't need us anymore and you go on with your life. And but we're here. Hopefully, we're here if you got any, if something pops up and you need a chat. And yeah. there's a yeah. there's that too. Um, yeah, uh, like like the way it might work for some people is that okay, they go through what we have and then come out the other side. Their PTSD is gone. They're able to go on with their lives. Things are much better for them, which is great. That's that's what we're we're here for. And then you may say to us, oh well, you know this this was really great. Um, do you have any tools that can help me attain uh, business or relationship or other other goals on our, in my life? And it's like, of course, uh, those are there too. But our primary purpose is to remove PTSD, to remove the suffering. And for those of you who don't know what our slogan is, contrary to what you may have been told, PTSD is not a life sentence. You can recover and live your life free of suffering. And it's that's just a choice. Pretty, it's a, yeah, <laughs> ultimately, yes. Well, a choice where you now have access to the people who can actually help you get to where you really want to go. Mm. And for some of you who have never encountered what we're doing before, that may seem unbelievable. Then again, you're, you're listening to someone here who literally has recovered from PTSD. It, in, in some yeah. ways, it's miraculous, incredible, and what the hell just happened? You know, it's, it's like that. In, a, in one way, I'm still not used to it. And in other ways, I'm going, wow, this is pretty cool. And mm. you will find out. You know, there's that one link. Feel free to have, uh, have at her. And this broadcast will be up. Um, I think it will still be up on my page after we're done. But I think we're pretty close to being done for yep. today. I thought we were only going to do half an hour. We've done an hour, which is good enough. We'll see who discovers like this a, after we're done. It's like our Skype calls, Nathan. Let's have a quick chat for 15 minutes and we'll yeah. two hours later we're going to be up the call. I know. I know. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, here we go again. But that's just the way it is when we do this stuff. And it, it's, yep. well, it's fun. It really is. I mean, granted, yep. the, the topic's very serious and very painful and all that, but there's there's also quite a bit of fun that can be had in this. Yeah. And uh, I mean, yep. it, it just coming out the other side of it for myself personally, looking back, is just like, wow. What really becomes cool about the whole thing is you will forget. 
all the stuff of the past. It will just dissolve out of your life, which is what it's meant to do. And you'll just move on, you, and you may wind else, up looking at it going, what happened? What? Are you, forget, are you forgetting it, or are you just looking the other direction and moving forward from it, and it's just behind, it's just not there anymore? It's, you're not looking at it. You know, that's a tough one to answer because it, it's reminiscent of some of the spiritual stuff that I went through. The spiritual stuff, it wasn't so much that I forgot it. Actually, I did, but it dissolved. It dissolved out of my life. That personality, that person I was before, and it's very similar to this. It, it, and in so many different ways, it's like when you go through something very difficult, it looks like a giant mountain in front of you. And then you face it and you go through it by whatever means, this being similar and different. But when you go through it, it ceases to be a problem. I don't really think about mm -hmm. it anymore. It, it's just, I mean, there's been the odd thing, but for the most part, no. And the personality goes, who, like, in my opinion, my experience of it, personality of who I was before it and the personality of where I am now is different, very different. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the things I noticed that prior to that, I was attracting all the bullies and the, you know, people to take advantage and so on. And then after it ended, that stopped. And then what happened, because of what I had on my YouTube channel, not sure how it's going to go now, but a lot of the victims started showing up. The, these people uh, who were having trouble showed up. And now just mm -hmm. with what Hamish has got going now with the, the programs that we've got in place and just talking to people, it's been really rather very fast. I don't need to talk about my history so much. I just need to say, hey, this is where I come from, and here's, here's information. But I feel very different, and it's really, that's something I, I have difficulty uh, defining. It's just one of the things I've noticed is like stress to do with other things that's shown up or has shown up. And every time I look at it, I go, yeah, but this is just stress. Normal, everyday stress that people go through in whatever fashion. Is it PTSD? And the answer is no. There's a big difference, huge difference. Yep. That's all I can tell you about it. You'll find out. Yep. If and when you choose to work yep. with us in one way or another, you will find out, and then you'll come back to us and, go, and say something, wow, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Well, of course, how <laughs> can you? Mm. You're, uh, you're on one side of the door not knowing what's on the other side, and you're not going to get to that other side until you go through that door, and then you'll find mm. out for yourself, and you'll have your own yeah. story. Yep. And that's, that's, yep. that's it. Much. And on the other side, it's it's really nice. It's I'm you know, Susie says there. It's I agree. It's a huge difference, and it's like uh, what's happened. Thank God I'm free now. I can't even, I can't even remember what it's like to have the PTSD, depression, and major anxiety. Free is an understatement. Now, Susie and I haven't done a lot of work. There's only been there's been a lot of conversational stuff. With Susie's had the the two audios the um, and had huge results from the heal your past and the um, like I said, the sleep one. Um, and, you know, we've had some conversations around it and <laughs> I wouldn't to say that it's gone for, for years of living with it. Um, it can collapse very diff very quickly in a very simple simple way. Yeah, it is it doesn't have amazing. to be it doesn't have to be drawn out process with reliving a lot of stuff. But, you know, like you said before, you know, the mainstream way of doing things is is okay people get results from that and they do what they do in that space it's um yeah. where we're a different option we're a different we're a different way of looking at it a different way of doing it um but you know it it, it does work too it's and very nicely yeah. much 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 faster the old stuff i tried everything under the sun and nothing made a difference for me i mean some people um, have spoken about another method called EMDR uh, being very effective and very useful for them. I had about 15 sessions of EMDR. It didn't touch any of it for me. So, And all that means is that we're different. We, we yeah, function absolutely. differently. It, it, that's yeah, just the way it is. Won't, this won't work for some people also. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I think so, it's time for us to, to stop for the day. We, we've on an hour and a bit and yep. <laughs> we'll, we will do it again 
uh, next week. Uh, this time I think I'm going to try it with YouTube Live because it will allow people to actually watch the broadcast from where they are. It might eliminate some of the problems that we're dealing with today. I don't know. It's only one way to find yep. out. That's to do it. Yep. So if you are watching the replay of this, get, feel free to get in touch, send a message, send an email, Facebook, whatever. We're here to talk, here to help. Yeah. Alrighty. So that's it for today. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us. Mm.